Well, I'm Jaden Jefferson, joined by Ottawa Hills Local School Superintendent Adam Fineski to talk last week's incident here. So give people an idea of what happened, because I know there's a lot of misinformation out there. There is, you know, and unfortunately in times like that, um, you know, communication starts and it's a lot of rumors spreading, um, a lot of things that weren't true um, in, in a good way. Uh, because many of the things that were spreading just weren't true. So about 7.50 a.m., the school district received um, information from the Ottawa Hills Police that a 911 call came in um, that there was an active shooter in the building. Um, so that's right at our arrival time, which is probably the busiest time of the day. Um, so we immediately put the, the junior, senior high on lockdown, as well as the elementary school, which is located just right around the corner. Uh, just to be safe and find out, um, you know, we had not heard anything uh, other than just that. So police came, got right to the building. We actually had over six um, police departments from all over the area swarm Ottawa Hills to make sure we had the support. Um, and that was just, uh, we were so thankful for that. Uh, about 15, 20 minutes later, it was determined that it was not true. Um, they did decide to um, evacuate the kids out to the uh, high school uh, football stadium just to be safe so they could check the whole building, look in every closet, every nook and cranny to make sure. Um, about 15 to 20 minutes later, we decided to move to the elementary gym, which in our crisis plan is the spot where these students go. And it just seemed like at the time the best decision for anybody who was, w was there that we send them home with their parents. Um, we weren't going to have a, a good school day, a very productive school day at that point. We did the same thing with the elementary school. And by about, I would say around noon or so, we had all of our students safe with the parents. So definitely a pretty traumatic day, uh, a crisis situation for sure. Just so glad that no one was hurt, that there, there wasn't any truth to what happened. And as you had mentioned, there were a lot of different area agencies that responded to that mm -hmm. just for it to come out to be a hoax. So what is the exact approximation of just how many resources and how much money possibly was poured into this? Yeah, you know, it's hard to tell exactly, but we had over 60 police officers, wow. over six different uh, agencies were here. Toledo, the University of Toledo, the Metro Parks, they came, um, Sylvania Township, Ottawa Hills, Lucas County Sheriff. Um, I think the, where we're located, we're in the center here in the middle of Toledo. So it's, in a way, a good thing that we, they were able to all get here and support each other. And I think it was the time of day, it was the, um, the 911 call that came in, and unfortunately what the um, hoax caller was saying worried everyone that there was actually a person in here with a gun shooting a teacher and then looking to shoot other students. And it just was absolutely not true, but at the time, we have to just take every one of these situations seriously. And as you mentioned, one of the reasons that classes were dismissed early was because really when something like that happens, it's hard to be productive. It's hard to stay focused. It so really, yeah, when really that is. return to classes finally happens, are you expecting it to still be a distraction? And how are you guys going to overcome that? Yeah, so we're three-day weekend was, in a, in a sense, a blessing uh, to be able to have some time to heal and plan and think about the future. Coming back tomorrow, we know is going to be challenging for our kids, so we have some special things planned. Um, we're going to come in, we'll have extra police protection around the building just in case. Um, we have uh, four extra crisis counselors on hand along with our four guidance counselors already. We're going to have an assembly at the beginning of the day in the auditorium and the counselors are going to talk to the kids about what happened, kind of check in with them, give them the facts. Um, and really, you know, make sure that things are good before they head back to really start that learning process. So it isn't just coming to school like a normal school day. It's definitely going to be uh, sensitive. We're going to be flexible with kids. If they need to step out, talk to someone, if they have questions, we have the people on hand to make sure it goes well. And talking about that response, how well do you think our local agencies responded to that and your team here at Ottawa Hills? Yeah, forever grateful for the local law enforcement and what they were able to do to make sure that our campus was safe. We could not believe how quick they got here, um, how much protection we had around the school and just blown away by the amount of support that we had. Um, we are truly grateful for local law enforcement and our governmental agencies. The fire department was here. It was unbelievable to see how quick they got here. And do we have any progress in the search for who may have made that call or who was possibly responsible? Supposed to get an update on that tomorrow from the police department. It's in their hands right now, so the investigation's going on with them. Uh, they do believe it was a computer hoax, um, a generated response, that it wasn't an actual person. This is something that's happening. It's called swatting um, nationwide and, and happening particularly in affluent school districts. They're targeting. Um, so that would describe Ottawa Hills. So I think it's just interesting to see that it's somewhat of a pattern. 
Um, we don't believe it was any of our uh, kids or anybody in our community, um, but that it was, you know, kind of a, a hoax call that came in. Thank you.